right. Um, just give me one second. Okay, yes. Okay. So I've shared the screen. Are you able to see it? Yeah. Okay. So here are some past paper questions that you wanted me to do. So let's get started. Okay. I'll pick up a color. Okay. So the 15th question says the area of triangle ABC is 6 under the root 2. Calculate the value of x. So this is a triangle. It's not a right angle triangle. It's a triangle. And we know the side AB. We know the side CB. And we know this angle at B. So do you know the formula that we use for such triangles? Area. Of AB sine C. Mm, very good. So it would be 1 by 2. And then it would be the two given side, 2x minus 1 into x plus 3 and then sine 45, right? Yeah. Okay. And you need to find the value of x. So for that, you need to use the area that is given. It is 6 under the root 2. And now we need to simplify this. So sine 45 is x1 by 2. Then I'll, I'm writing down the value of sine 45. It's under the root 2 over 2. And then it's 2x minus 1. And then it's x plus 3. Okay. So I'm not expanding this at the moment. I just want to simplify things. Under the root and under the root can be cancelled. So 6 multiplied by 2 into 2 is 4. And now I can expand this, right? Wait, so yes. you would cancel out the root twos. Hmm. And then I had under the, I had one by two and I had under the root two by two. So these are multiplying with each other. So I have just taken the four from here to the numerator. Wait, how, does it, how does it become four? It's two and it's two. So I'll multiply these two twos. Oh. I don't see how it becomes four. Okay. Let me simplify it slowly, okay? So it is six under the root two. It is under the root two divided by two multiplied by two is four, okay? Then it's two X minus one X plus three. I'll take this under the root to the other side so it would be divided. So it would become 6 under the root 2 divided by under the root 2 equals 1 by 4. So x minus 1 into x plus 3. Okay. Now under the root 2, under the root 2, they would be cancelled. And I can take 4 to the other side. So it would be multiplied with 6. Okay. Because here it is yep. being divided. Here it is being divided. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. So it would be 6 multiplied by 4 equals. And yep. I'm left with this only. So it is 2x minus 1 into x plus 3. So this would yep. become 6 into 4 is 24. And now I'm going to expand the right side. So 2x into x would give me. 2x squared. Very good. And minus 1x plus 6x minus 3. So it can become 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. Okay. All right. Very good. Yes. And then minus 3. Yes, that is correct. Okay. And then you can just do mm -hmm. yes. 24 minus 3 equals 21. So 21 equals okay. 2x squared plus 5x. 21. Are you sure it will be 21? I mean, I mean 2x squared plus 5x. Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, you plus 3 on both sides. So it becomes 27 equals 2x squared plus 5x. Okay. It would be 27 equals 2x squared, 2x plus, squared 5x. plus 5x. Very good. Okay. I don't know what you would do here. 
Okay, now I can take twenty seven to the other side. Okay, so it would be yep. zero equals two x squared plus five x minus twenty seven. Now this yep. is a quadratic equation, right? Yep. How do we solve quadratic equations, Abdullah? Is it the quadratic formula? Okay. Now yes, you need to use the quadratic formula. So yeah. the formula is x equals. Can you help me writing down the formula? It's x equals minus b squared. My only minus b. Okay, minus b. Oh yeah, minus b minus. plus or minus hmm. root. Very good. B squared very, plus four ac minus four ac. Okay. Okay, minus four ac. Good. Over to A. Excellent. Yes, that is correct. Okay. And then you get your plus X equals and you get your minus one. Yeah. Okay. Now, Abdullah, can you plug in the values and then tell me the answer? Uh, yeah. A is going to be two. B is going to be five. And C is going to be minus 27. Be very careful while writing down. Minus these five plus root of five squared minus four times minus four times two times minus 27 Uh, yes. Are you getting x equals 2.63? Uh, I'm just writing it down now. Okay. But what value did you get for x? Uh, for plus x, I am... Um, hold on, let me just quickly okay. do it. Okay. So let's stop. Uh, all right, so For x plus, hmm. I'm getting for, for minus 1.1. Okay, so you are getting, uh, all right, let me check that, 25. And for negative, I am getting minus 8.9. So I'm not sure if that's right. Okay, no, your answer is wrong. Basically, uh, for positive x, it would be 2.63. Yeah. And the other one would be minus 5 point something. It would be 0.13. What I got? So you do minus okay. 5. Just check, your, just check your value for this one again. Okay, it should be 2.63. Just check that again. It's important. I did minus, so if I did minus 5 plus fraction five root five squared minus four times two times minus 27 hmm. over two times two be careful while doing two times two okay first find exactly. okay because if you're directly putting the division sign and then you're putting four you would get wrong answer obviously okay because this is being divided with all the fraction above are you getting my point if you're doing this on your calculator yeah. and if you're putting divide sign and then 2a after this thing you would not get the correct answer right okay. did you understand this thing uh let me try it quickly again and i'll see minus four times two times minus 27 no I, I i keep getting the wrong answers i don't know where i'm going wrong uh, can you send me a picture of the calculator? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think I know where I've gone wrong. Hold on. So, if... I, okay, I know where I went wrong. So, 
you just have to do frac there, and then you have to do minus five plus five squared minus four times two times minus 27 over four. 2.63, yep. yep. And then. And then you go all the way here. And then you just do it. And then, yeah, minus 5.13. Okay. Now the idea is that you are getting 2.63 and you're getting minus 5.13. So what do you think? What would be the value of x exactly? This one or this one? It would be the top one. Why? Because it's positive. No, not because of that. But because when you plug in x here, this would give you a positive length and this would give you a positive length, right? This is why. It could have been that using minus 5.13, you were getting positive length. So in that case, you would have chosen this as your answer, okay? Whenever yeah. you're solving your quadratic equation, you're getting two values. Never ever choose the positive one because it is positive. No, it is wrong. You need to yeah. check that this is going to give you a positive length. CB would be positive with 2.63 as its x. And AB would be positive with 2.63 as its x, right? If you are using yes. minus 5.13, you would have gotten a negative length. The Less, length can never yeah, be negative. negative okay? yeah. So this is the yeah. idea. This is something that you already knew. After plugging in area and after simplifying everything, this was the quadratic equation we got. Never ever get scared yeah. from quadratic equations, okay? They are easy. This is yeah. your go-to formula and even if it's given the data booklet, it should be on your fingertips, okay? Because this is the most used formula. So you should be clear with that, okay? Yeah. And once you know the formula, you need to plug in A, B, and C. This is A, this is B, and this is C. Minus comes with C. If you have minus with that number, with the constant number, and once you plug in the values, you will get two answers. So you need to pick up one according to the situation, okay? Yeah. Okay. So any doubts in the first question? Uh, no, I think I get it. Okay. Do you want to write it down? Uh, I've, I've wrote it down. Okay. All right. Then let's talk about the next one. Okay. All right. So this is the next question. Okay. Right, so what is the question? It says using x n plus one equals this with x naught equals this, find the value of x one, x two, and x. Okay, Abdullah, have you done such questions before? Have you done iterative uh, formulas? Uh, I think a bit, yeah. Okay, it's okay. So basically, in these questions, what is the idea? I'll tell you, even if you have not done it, okay? This yeah. is your iterative formula okay this is what we call it yeah this is your iterative formula and this is your x naught now the idea is that what is the formula exactly saying the formula is saying that when you will plug in x n plus one sorry when you will plug in x n you will get the next term what does this mean? This means if n is 0, if this number is 0, this number would be 0 plus 1. So that would give you x1, right? Yeah. Okay. This is the idea. Please pay attention. So for x, x1, mm -hmm. for would x? Be, x1 would be minus 2 minus 4 over. x1 would be minus 2 minus 4 over what? Minus two minus four over hmm. x, uh, x naught. Okay. Two, minus two point five Very squared. Very good. Excellent. Okay, so we have x naught. 
so it would be minus 2.5 very good okay now minus and minus would be cancelled and it would be minus 2 plus 4 over 2.5 so what value are you getting exactly oh wait don't you have to square it Oh yeah, sorry, 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 I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. This is supposed to. So it'd be minus two. Yeah, just give plus... me one second. Okay, because now the sign would also change. Okay, so you need to square minus two point five. You need to square. Yeah, and minus one point three six. As x one, and then. Can't you use the answer button on your calculator to find x2 and Very x3? Very good. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Now, the final answer is what? Uh, so, would you do... It is, yes. Mm -hmm. Minus 2 for x2. No, for x1. Minus... First, tell me the value for x1. What are you getting for x1? Equals, equals minus 1.36. No, no, no. Abdullah, check this again. It is minus 2.64. Check this again, please. Minus 2. So, you do minus 2. Yeah. Minus four over negative two point no, five. Squared. Yeah, but but be careful that you put a bracket around this, okay? While squaring okay. this, because you have negative sign here, it would become uh, negative two point six four. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. Good. Now so once you have x one, okay. Yes. Now what do I do? I need to find x. Hold on. Let me just write okay, this sure, down. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. And then mm -hmm. for x2, you do minus 2, minus 4, br brackets, and then bracket. Uh, you do minus 2, minus 4 over bracket open, answer, bracket close, squared. Very good. Okay, I'm just writing which... down the value. which gives you negative 2.6 or negative 2.6. Don't, don't round off the value, okay? Tell me the value oh. that you're getting exactly. Negative 2.573921028464. Oh. Okay, very good. Negative oh. 2.573921. Okay. All right, and what about x3? Seven, three, nine, two. And then x3, you do the same again. So you do, oh wait, can I just press equals again on my calculator and it would give me the same thing? So would, would the answer be negative 2.6? And? Negative 2.6, 0, 3, 7, 6, yes, 7, 2, 5, very 5. Good, very good. Negative 2.6, 0, 3, 7, 6, 7, and yeah, that is it, okay? So you're getting long, long answers. Okay, this is how we find x1, x2, and x3. Okay, what is the next part of this question? Okay, then you need to write down the answer in x1, x2, and x3, okay? And then it is, explain the relationship between x1, x2, x3, and the equation this, okay? Now I'll tell you. So, how are we getting this? That is the first question. I'll, I'll rewrite this thing down there. It is xn plus 1 equals minus 2 minus 4 over xn square. Okay. Now you will see one thing. I'll simplify this. I'll simplify this. Uh, by assuming xn plus 1, xn equals x, okay? I'll rewrite this equation with x as the variable. So I'll plug in x equals minus 2 minus 4 
over x square. What is the step one? Please pay attention. I've taken x instead of xn plus one and xn. You'll see why, okay? And now I'm going to simplify this. And once I'm done with the simplification of this, I will get this thing. So I'll take LCM on the right side. And that would be x squared minus 2x squared minus 4. I'll take this to the other side. So x squared into x would become what? x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4 and this is x cubed plus 2x squared plus 4 equals 0 okay since this iterative formula is giving me this equation now the relationship is this that when i'll plug in x1 x2 and x3 this equation would be satisfied approximately satisfied okay so let's plug in x1 just plug in x1 it is minus 2.64 so it, it, yes yes minus so minus 2.64 it won't be exactly zero because you know when iterative formulas we keep on doing it but it should be approximately zero plus two times minus 2.64 plus four equals hmm i did not get zero Okay, wait, let me check as well. I got 5.7. No, no, you're getting the wrong answer again, Abdullah. Check that again. It, 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 it is 0 point something. I'm getting that. So I did. Minus. Oh, I didn't square it. My bad, I didn't square it. So maybe if I do that. So you do minus 2.64 squared. Uh, oh, minus 2 Q. point, yeah, Q. Q, let me try that. What? Minus 2.64 cubed plus 2 times 2.64 squared plus 4. Let me try again because I'm messing up here. No, I'm not getting the right answer. Minus 2.64 cubed Plus yeah. two. Make sure that you are putting these brackets the way I'm putting them, okay? Okay. And now check that again. Minus six four plus four. No, I'm still not getting the right answer. <laughs> okay, so do it with, with me. Okay, take out the calculator. Make sure. It's yeah, that's. Clear. Oh wait, wait, hold on. I got minus 0 0.460544. Exactly. Yes, yes, okay. So it is minus 0 0.46 and then something, something, okay? So yeah. it is approximately zero. And when you will use X2, when you will use X3, your answer would be more close to zero, right? Because X1 is just yeah. first value, okay? So it is, it has turned out to be, and that is approximately zero, okay? Now you can plug in x, x2 for your convenience. Just plug, x2 is a big, big value, so that would take time. But if you plug in the exact value, okay, you will get uh, an answer that is closer to zero. You can check, check that for these numbers. I'll write it down there. So... Minus two points. Five, seven, Minus two point five seven three ninety. Three ninety two. Yes, check it for this one. Cubed plus two brackets minus two point five seven nine two close bracket squared plus four. 0 0.19774317736. Exactly. So it is 0 0.19, right? So it is closer yeah. to zero. So this is what I was telling you. So to answer this question, step one would be 
using the using this iterative formula and plugging in x instead of x n plus one and x n, and you'll show that you are getting this formula. Okay. Once you are done with this. You'll plug in x1, x2, and x3, and your answer would be approximately zero. So this is how you would explain the relationship between these and this equation. Okay. Uh, so is this okay? Yeah, this. Is good. Okay. Are you done with noting this down? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about this. Abdullah, are you done with the upper and lower bounds? Uh, I I know how to do it. I haven't done this school, but I, I learned okay, myself. Okay, I know how to okay. do it. Okay, that's good. So, Abdullah, you have your exams in this May, June? Yeah. Okay, all right. Best of luck. Okay. So, it is a train traveled along a track in one ten minutes, correct to the nearest five minutes. Yeah. Jake finds out that the track is 270 kilometers long. He yeah. assumes that the track has been measured correct to the nearest 10 kilometers. Okay. So could the average speed yeah. of the train have been greater than 160 kilometers per hour? Oh, so can I, know you do, about, I, know, okay. I know how to do this. I know how to do this. So you do speed equals distance over time. So you find the upper, so you find the upper bound of the average and the lower bound so the upper bound of the time is 112.5 one second one second please 112.5 okay okay yes 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 and then the lower bound of the time is 107.5 okay yes and then you have distance which the upper bound is 275, the lower bound is 265. And then you find both speeds, but the time is in hours. And right now it's in minutes. So you have to times it by, or do you divide it by 60 to get from minutes into hours? Or do you times by 60? Uh, one second, one second only. One, two, sixty-five. Okay, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, what, what is your question? Uh, it's it wants any kilometers per hour, but we have in minutes. So, do we have to like turn it into hours yes, by yes, times yes. it by sixty? Yes. 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 We need to convert it into hours. So basically, hmm. you want the upper bound speed, and you want the lower bound speed. So the upper bound speed would be U B of um d divided by lb of t okay very that makes good. Sense. yes that makes so it be 100 but and then you do um you do times by 60 times by 60 so it'd be 275 mm. divided by 107.5 times 60 6450 is it? Okay, just one second. Okay, divide by 60. Or do you divide by 60 or times by 60? Uh, the time is in minutes now. So you, for converting it into hours, we'll divide it. Okay, so you divide by 60, divide by 60. So you do 107.5 divided by 60 to get 43 over 24. Mm. So what is your answer? What is the average speed? 275, because that's the distance, divided by 43 over 25. Are you getting 153.4883720? Very good, yes, that is so you correct. Have, but because it's asking for the average, you have to write like most of it out. So 09302. And then you find LB, which is the LB of D divided by the UB of T. Okay, now, now listen to me, please. You don't need to find the lower bound because the question is, could the average speed of the train have been greater than this? 
if the lower if the upper bound this is the upper bound of the area, of the average speed right this is yeah. the upper bound of average speed so if this is less yeah. than 160 then certainly the answer is no okay oh, okay so the answer would be no okay. yeah all right good let's read the second part jake's assumption was wrong the track was measured correct to the uh, nearest 5 kilometers explain how this could affect your decision in part a yes now you need to recalculate using 5 kilometers for the track rather so here would be some changes yep hmm so it would be to the nearest is this the track this is the wait track. what's the question this is the what's the explain how this could affect your decision in part a so it would be the distance has increased and if it's five to over two that means mm, distance would not be increased okay be careful with it so you could do 27 272.5 and 267.5 very good which is i think it the this it wouldn't change your answer would it because it's it, the same it would it would change uh, yeah the answer is still going to be no that is correct but yeah. the fact that this is basically the thing which you need to talk about okay could the average speed of the train have been greater than 160 kilometers so this is not going to change that but this is going to change this at least because now yeah the distance is less and the time is same so obviously it would one it would be less than 160 now right wait so how would you answer b though how would you answer it okay so the answer would be less distance because initially it was 275 and now it is 272.5 so less yeah. distance in same time so your upper bound would decrease yes yeah. so the upper bound of would de yes word word route 160 it would decrease okay so initially it was 153 now it would it would decrease yeah right yeah uh any doubts in this question i'll zoom out and then you can just have a look at it um no i get it okay very good okay let's do this question now we have been doing circles so things should be good here a b c are points on a circle of radius 5 cm and center o da and dc are tangents do is 9 cm i'm just writing down do work out the arc length of abc hmm. we need to compute the arc length of abc so uh, what is the formula for arc length arc length equals pi d times angle of arc over 360 hmm okay the angle is that right right the angle yeah so let's call it theta so theta over 2 pi into pi D. This is correct. Okay. That oh, correct. I know how to do this. I know how to do this. Yes, I yes, think. yes. Okay, okay, okay. So mm -hmm. you know C and A are ninety degrees because they're the tangents. Very good. Okay. So, and then you can just use um. You need. You could use a uh, soccer toe. Very good. To, yes. To find um, yes. the the middle angles. This one and this one. Yes, and that, 
And then when you know that them two are, because you know angle around a point is 360, Very you know what angle theta would be. Excellent. And then you can just do arc equals theta over 360 times pi times 10. Very good. That is correct. Okay. The other thing is that if this angle turns out to be x, this would also be x. So when I was teaching you the circle properties, I told you that this angle and the other angle, they're always same, okay? So just find x. Once you have x, you can easily find the other x or just, you know, multiply it by two. So that would Wait, give so you... Would, would the they combined. be the same? Yeah, they would be same. x degrees and x degrees, they are same, okay? Yeah, so how many marks is that would, if I... Uh... Five, Ooh, five. Yes. Okay. So just find the angle X and tell me the value that you're getting for X. So you could just use adjacent and hypotenuse, which is K. So you can do cos minus one A over H five over nine. X equals 56.25101. Very good. Very good. And then you can just do times that by two you get 112.5 and then you can do 360 minus answer so the outer angle becomes 247.4979772 and then you can just do answer over 360 times pi ooh, times pi mm. pi times pi d so pi times 10 which gives you answer 21.5982727 very good excellent yes very yes. good very good okay so that is correct. Okay, let's talk about this question now. Okay, now this is a um, quadratic equation. So first, you need to factorize this. And once we are done with the factorization, I'll tell you the next step, okay? So Abdullah, can you do it by middle term breaking? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, so you need a number so, such. Okay. 2x mm -hmm. squared plus 3x minus 2 to the 0. No, no, no. Wait a second. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I can, I, I'll solve it now. So you need 10 by 2. So you need two numbers that plus to make 3 mm. and times to make minus 4, which yes. is 4 and 1. Very good. 4 and minus so 1. You, okay. So you could do 2x minus 1. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. 2x minus 1 and x plus 4. Okay. So you're talking about the factors? Okay. Or oh, uh, the brackets, yeah. Oh, wait. Wait. Is that how you do it? I wrote one bracket is 2x minus 1 and the other bracket x plus 4. x plus 2. Is it x plus 2? It, it should be x plus 2 because this number is 2, right? And when oh. you'll take 2x common, it would be um, 2, okay? Ooh, wait, I've never learned how to do it that way. So, so what do we write? Okay, listen to me. So, once you are done with middle term breaking, you need to factorize it, okay? So, once you factorize it, it would be 2x squared. Okay, now I need to factorize the first two terms. I'll factorize these two. I can take 2 and x out. So it would be x plus 2 and I can take 1 minus 1 common. So I'll take minus 1 common and it would be x plus 2. These two should be same and then this is greater. How do you get 4x? How do you get 4x? Because 4 and 1, 4 and minus 1 are two numbers such that when I multiply them, I get minus 4. When I add them, I get 3. Right? Uh -huh. And then what about the minus two at the end? Yeah, so I've taken minus one common. I've taken minus one common. Uh, okay, just give me I'm one confused. second. Just give me one second. Yes. 
Okay, so did you understand it? Hmm. Okay, Abdullah, it's a simple uh, middle term breaking thing. Okay. I know th I know it's plus four and minus one because yeah. I did this thing and you okay. get it because you just times the minus two at the end and then you just see what pluses for minus for pluses for three. So then you write two x squared plus four. Okay, okay, yep, yep, I get this. Okay, I'll take two x common then now. So now you take two x common mm -hmm. and that means it'll become x plus two. Yep. And then you take minus one common. Very good. And then you just write x plus two. Very good. Okay. These two. And then what do you do from here? Okay. Now I'll write down this number and this number. Okay. Two x minus one, and I'll write down this and this once only. Okay, because they are repeated. X plus two. This thing is okay. greater than two. Okay. Ah, okay, 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 I get this. Right? Yes. So I just rubbed the uh, positive signs by mistake, but this is what we have. Did you understand that? And what do you do next? Okay. Now the next step is you need to know plotting. Do you know how to plot these? Just a basic idea. You just need to, oh, do you just need to find out what X is? Yes, very good. Oh, so you could do mm -hmm. 2X squared. 2X squared? Could you see, could, wait, could, oh, wait, never mind, never mind, never mind. I thought you need to find out what X is. Mm -hmm. You can just do that and tell me. Oh, wait, is one of the X's minus two? Yes, very good. And then the other is plus plus zero point five. Yes, that is correct. Oh yeah. It's minus two, and then it is. Ah, yep, yep, yep. I get that. Okay, and would it be a smiling face or sad face? It because it is an x squared, it would be a smiley face, Very a good. positive parabola. Very good, excellent. So I'll make the graph. Okay, now please pay attention. Okay, what do we know? This is the y axis, this is the x axis. Can I write this thing this way? Y equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 greater than 0. Okay, this is what I had. So I have just added a y because that is going to help me with the answer. Y is greater than zero. It means y is greater than zero. So all the values that are above the x axis. So I'll be focusing on this part of the graph and this part of the graph, right? These yeah. are the points that I need to focus on. And if I talk about these points, what are the values of x? It would be something more than 1 by 2, more than 1 by 2, more than 1 by 2. This would be less than minus 2. Aha. Uh -huh. So you can write, yes, you could write hmm. x is greater okay. than, x is greater than, Hmm. One uh, one point five uh, one over two. Very good. But le less than minus two. Okay, so not but like x is greater than one by two, and then you can just write it down with a comma, and it is. Oh oh. Less than minus two. So either x is lying here, or x is lying here. Okay, these are the two answers. C D G X one over two. X less than minus two. Yep. Okay. All right. Did you understand this example? Yeah. Any doubts? So why you do y e? How do you know y is just going to be on the top parts, like because only the top y, parts? Because y is positive. Okay. Y is greater uh -huh. than zero. 
Aha. Yeah, got it. Okay. Very good. And this is how we solve all the quadratic inequalities. Yeah. Okay. So are you comfortable with this example? Yeah. Are you done with uh, noting it down? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's talk about yeah. this example. It says the equation of a curve y equals ax. A is the point where the curve intersects the y axis. State the coordinates of A. Now I want you to think about it and tell me the value. This is the curve. You need to find the coordinates of A and I'll just give you a rough idea. This is the y axis. This is the x-axis. The curve could be anything of this type. We do not know the shape of this, but you need to find this coordinate. So what would be the x and y coordinate at this point? This is your hmm. equation. So it says y equals a to the power of x. Ah, so. Oh, uh. I don't know how to start. Is it because it's a mm -hmm. okay, curve? Okay, look, look. So what is the examiner telling you? That the curve intersects the x-axis. What is value y. of x? What? Why? Why? Uh, yeah, sorry. The curve intersects y-axis. Okay. So what is the value of x? on any point of the y-axis. X is obviously zero, okay? So we know one coordinate. We know that X would be zero. And once we'll plug in zero, we have Y equals A to the power X. If I plug in zero, what would be the value of one. this number? Very good. This would be one, okay? So this would be the answer. Well, that was crazy. Yeah. Okay, very good. Let's talk about this one. So oh, it is. Dear. The equation of circle C is x squared plus y squared equals 16. The circle C is translated by the vector 3, 0 to give circle B. Draw a sketch of circle B. Label with coordinates the center of C and any points of intersection of with the x-axis. Okay, all right. Let's keep things simple. Let's just start the discussion by right making the circle so this is the y axis x axis the circle would have what center of the law if this is the scenario for this scenario what would be the center uh it would be uh, two plus. But, um, it would. I've got no clue. Okay. Do you remember this thing? X minus H, and then Y minus K square. So H and K used to be the coordinates of the center. What is H and K in your case? X, H and K is X and Y. No, just, just, just look at this now. It is X yeah, squared yeah. and it is X minus H squared. So you do not have yeah. any number that is being subtracted from X. And you do not have any number that is being subtracted from Y, right? Yeah. So that means H and K are what? Zero. Yes. So the center would be zero. Okay. And what about R? What would be the radius of the circle? R equals 16 squared. Uh, 16. No. So is it 4? Very good. Okay. Excellent. So I'll make the circle. And it would be something of this type. I'm not, obviously, I'm not able to make the proper shape. But, you know, you get the point, right? But this is not the question. The question is that your circle is translated by this vector. So, yes. Have you studied translations? Yeah, but I'm not really good at them. Okay. Um, I'll tell you. Did you understand the plotting of the circle? Oh, uh, yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, I get this. Sure? Okay, very good. 
now we have oh so you pick a point like the center and it's x is positive three very good so you x you go right three and then you just stay there okay because zero it's Oh yeah, that yeah. This is easy. You just go right three, and then that's yeah. you just stay zero. This is the center. Okay. Yeah, the that's circle. the new center. Okay, and I need to make the circle again, right, with the same radius and everything. Okay, so I'll rub the old circle. Okay, and I'm gonna make the new circle now. Okay, so this is three. The radius is four, so it would be it's minus one. So it would be something of this type, right? They wanted us to mention the x coordinates, uh, the intercepts on the x axis, and any points of intersection with the x axis. And this would be what, Abdullah? That would be seven. Very good. Excellent. Very well done. Okay. So, yes, this is how you make such circles. So yeah, did you understand this example completely? And then would you write, would you write label the coordinates? So it would be three, zero, three, oh no, it would be three, zero yeah, equals three, zero. center. Yeah. And then X, and then you could write minus one, zero and seven, seven. zero. Very good. Yeah, I get that, that's easy. So I'll I'll go up again and just tell me if you have any questions from all these uh, that we have discussed. No, I don't think I have any questions. I think I get all of it. Okay, all right. Then I'll stop sharing this, and I we still have some minutes, so I'll share my whiteboard. And let's talk about the other questions which I discussed on group. Let me just take out those. Okay. So let's say I'll write I'll do one question only. So let's say it is one. 25 x to the power three y to the power two divided by twenty seven x to the power four and y to the power Seven whole power minus four by three. Okay, this is yep. the question that we need to do. Okay, so what that twenty seven x four by seven. Okay, but, now for but, this question, first you need to stay within the brackets and simplify as much as we can. Okay, oh, yeah, so you could do. Hmm. 125x12. Okay, so I'll cancel right? this and I'll do minus 4. And I yeah. will do what? I'll cancel this and I'll do minus 2, right? Yes. So it would be x12 over. Okay, 125x to the power 27 of 27y minus 5. Positive five. Why minus five? Positive. Yep. Yeah, positive five. You're right. Okay. This is good. Next step is minus four by three. Then you have to flip everything. So it would be twenty-seven y to the power of five over one hundred and twenty-five x to the power of twelve. And in the and then outside would be three over four. Are you sure that the fraction would also be flipped? Yes, I am sure. No, the sign would be changed. Okay? It would be 4 by 3. Oh, is it only the negative that goes away? Yeah, yes, yes. All right. 
and then mm. you could do mm. all right so then you could find the cube root of everything very good so it would be so, which is three would it become three five to the power of five three y to the power of five five by three okay because you're taking cube root so it would be with every number right uh, so, oh, I see. And then it would be 5x, 12, 3. Very 12 good. over 3. And now we're left with the power 4. Okay? Of 4. And this would be cancelled? Oh, this would be, uh, be 4 over 1, which is 4. Yeah. yeah. So then you just you just uh, times everything by four to the power of four. Yeah, so it would be 81 y to the power five by three into four divided by five to the power four. So it would be 625 x to the power 16. Right, Abdullah? X, mm, wouldn't it be four times four? times four times four no why four times four it would be four times four that is 16 right oh i see i see okay okay so it and then you simplify the top bit so it'd be 81 y five over three times four over one which equals 20 over three very good over 625 x to the power of 16. Yes. <coughs> so you uh, you times all of it by four rather than oh so you so you divide all of the powers by three but you find the cube root yes yes of very the good. powers very good no 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 no, no. You, cube, you cube root the big numbers you divide by three on the small numbers and then you then you uh, quad the big numbers but then you um times by four the small numbers yeah basically so the, yeah, yeah the idea is that x and y are variables i don't know what x to the power four would be i don't know what under the root x or y would be right so i've just divided the powers uh, the way they were like i've just multiplied the powers with the variables okay i've just multiplied the powers with the variables i've multiplied four by three uh with this power i've multiplied four by three with this power and for the rest, I've just, you know, uh, used the numbers and I've taken the under root and then I've taken the power four, right? Yeah. Okay. So anything else that you would like me to explain? Uh, no. Okay. So I will stop sharing the screen. I'll stop recording.